Anthony, Andrew, thanks for having us. Um, we are an, uh, an architectural visualization firm and we're located just in El Segundo. Um, and so just a couple of things, and we don't have too much planned, but let's see if I can get this to work here. Um, so we're gonna just talk about who we are, why we are, which is what we're doing in our workflow today, and then um, some DIY stuff. So we're really happy to see all the stuff going on here with Twin Motion and Archicad, of course. Um, so a little bit of background about us. We started in um, 2012 as Spatialists, as a 3D rendering company. And so we were using programs like Atlantis, Atlantis and Lumion uh, and uh, a bunch of... A little bit of Twin Motion. Twin yeah. Motion just came out recently, so no Twin Motion. But <laughs> Atlantis was kind of the main the old platform. Stuff. We went uh, through right. Cinema 4D and, right. and 3ds Max and all those types of traditional right. rendering um, software. So, um, and Philip actually is the talent and the tech. So, I just talk a lot, um, and I'm marketing and operations and client service and that sort of thing, all the soft stuff. And um, he's really the talent. Um, and Philip actually moved here from Kenya, um, and in Kenya he studied architecture and then came here to finish his schooling. And so he has an undergrad in uh, interior design, and then he has a master's degree in construction management. And for us, I think that's a big differentiator, right, because we are a visualization firm, but we're rooted in architecture. And so it's a little bit different than sending your plans off to a designer or you know, a visualizer who might not be able to even read them. Right, and understand really what is going on in your plans. Um, so me, I'm operations client service. If, if we ever work together, you'll talk to me a lot, and I'm really super friendly, so we'll have a good time. Um, and we're also um, really selective about our clients. We don't take on too many, um, and we like to kind of stay small and um, do really, really kick ass crazy stuff. And so um, that's what we do, and we have a great time doing it. Um, when we were working in all this traditional 3D rendering, it was probably 20, end, end of 2015 maybe, right. when somebody showed us Unreal Engine, um, which was this VR gaming platform, and our minds kind of exploded, and we decided that we were going to dip our toe into this. And in 2016, I left my corporate marketing job working in, in marketing technology, and um, started working with Philip, and I said, we're mm -hmm. gonna transition this company into a VR firm, only VR. We're gonna do everything in VR. So, um, and the reason why is because everything that we did in rendering, we can achieve in VR, and then so much more. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So, <laughs> VR, MR, AR, what the hell. There's so many different um, acronyms floating around. So, um, I mean, this is just a brief, right? If you're not that familiar, VR is virtual reality, so it's a completely virtual environment. Um, and then you have AR, which is augmented reality, which is where things overlay your actual reality. This is getting to sound a little woo-woo. Um, MR is mixed reality, which can kind of be a combination of both. And then it gives you a little more leeway, like if you say MR, you're not, you're probably right. But what I like is using XR because that means extended reality and then you're never wrong. So you can say something is XR and it means any of the above, right? It's like checking a team. So I really love that, uh, that acronym is my favorite, XR. So the features of VR are cumulative, immersive, and interactive. And what I mean by that, um, cumulative, means that once we build an environment, we can, it's like the sky's the limit. You don't have to rebuild things. You don't have to, if your client halfway through says, well, I'd also like you to show me shots from here. I'd also like a video. Oh, I'd also like, I saw this, my friend has this thing that her architect did and I want to see that. So you don't have to worry about that stuff because you build um, basically what's a, it's a game level in Unreal Engine, right, which is what we use. And, and then you have this entire world um, to play with and to manipulate and to do what you want to do. So you can create your still shots, you can create your video, and, and we'll talk more about that. Um, if you've ever worked with rendering, you've felt the pain of rendering time. Um, and so not just still images that might take anywhere from three hours to eight hours to render, but videos that might take a week to render. So um, we kind of trade that, and this was one of the big selling points, I think you'll agree. Um, we, bake, we bake a scene one time, 
in Unreal Engine. So we create this world, we bake it, which is their version of render it, right? And then that's it, we're done. We can take shots from anywhere, we can take video from that point, we don't have to re-render. It's huge, huge, huge um, relief of pain, <laughs> physical sometimes, <laughs> um, waiting for rendering. Especially when a client's like, yeah, my deadline's tomorrow, but I just want five more images. And you're just like, um, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, we can take unlimited still shots, we can shoot movies like we're walking through the space with an iPhone. I mean, it's really that easy. And then there's little to no post-production because a lot of the Photoshop and Adobe Tech capabilities are built into Unreal Engine. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this is kind of something that you see in rendering, right, in Interactive 360 Panorama, where they take um, what they call photos photospheres, right, which are 360 pictures and then you can kind of move around. So we can do all of this with VR. This is something that a rendering or a visualization company who uses 3D rendering might do. You can kind of go to your different map or whatever location and spin around the room, right? So that can be done in VR. Um, this is how it looks in the goggles, which we actually have this setup over there in goggles if you wanted to take a look. We have something called gazing, which is pretty cool. So when you're gazing around the room and you look at this point, it'll transform you to that point. So you don't have to click anything <coughs> on your glasses to do that. You just stare at this and kind of hmm, wonder what's down there. And then magically you're there. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. This is a project that we worked on in Corona del Mar. And we started in ArchiCAD, and Philip loves ArchiCAD. Um, and I think that, um, you know, just the tools that are involved in the program, I'm super not ArchiCAD geek, I'm just not that cool. Um, but you guys can talk shop with Philip afterwards and he can tell you all the reasons that he loves ArchiCAD. Um, but so we have up here a basic grayscale model that came in, we imported from ArchiCAD. And then here you can see we have some different looks for this, um, for the front of this building. And what I want to draw your attention to specifically is that, um, you know, with the power of ArchiCAD behind the VR, we're able to actually show some options for our architect and our builder who we worked with collaboratively on this for this roof line. So initially the plans came over like this where this roof was closed off right here. Mm -hmm. And it, it essentially made this area unusable. And so when we got it in, they, they realized that that was there. And that's one of the things that I love about visualization. And I heard, I think it was you say earlier, you know, you've got some cheats in there. You don't want them to know that. <laughs> but you know what, we feel like um, when we can reveal like what this is really gonna look like, then we can solve problems together. And so we love solving problems with our clients. And when we saw this, when the, when the architect and the builder saw it, they thought, God, it would be really nice if we could utilize that space. And so Philip said, because he understands the plans and how construction works, we can do that. And, and he opened up this staircase that goes down, and now they have this usable space up here in front. And it was really pretty painless because we were using RPCAD and VR. So it was a nice, experience for our client, it gave them more than what they had thought they were going to have. You know, they, they didn't know that that's necessarily what it was going to look like. And so it saved everybody a lot of headache too, because if it was built, they might be looking at it going, God, we really should have used that space. You know, and instead, we, they get to build it once and, and get exactly what they want. This keeps popping up if you ever download a remote. It keeps trying to offer me advertising while we're talking. Um, so you can still do all the same things with rendering, I mean with uh, VR that you do with rendering, right? Here's a different front option that we gave them with the, the grass and the, the different garage and, and that sort of thing. Um, here's the rear of that space. And then we also created some advertising for them. So um, we can do all of these things that you typically get with rendering, you can do with VR. So that's kind of the point of these slides. This is a video that I'm going to show you. Um, we did this for a client on the East Coast, and um, we've got some stills and some panning. So here's a still shot. Um, here's a moving shot. You can see the trees are kind of breathing. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. That's more that VR type experience that we can build in. Um, the really cool thing about this video is that it took me two hours to put it together. Two hours. I didn't have any video. Philip had done the model. 
We had no video, two hours. I don't know if you can hear the music, but it's, <laughs> there's music, it's time. <laughs> there's smoke, we're looking interior, we're looking exterior. Have you picked all your materials? Yeah, absolutely, the model was done. But if you know anything about creating video in rendering, this would be at least a week. And, and mostly because of that render time. And so in, in traditional rendering, every single frame has to be rendered. So if you're doing 20 frames a second or 40 frames a second, those all have to be rendered and each one takes three hours to six hours, eight hours. So you've got huge render times. Um, the other thing that goes away with this for us, I know someone said charge their clients more, but we don't charge more for this. So right now when you, right now when you um, call a rendering company and you say we want video, they say that'll be $75 per second. And you go, holy shit because you're looking at a video that's a minute long and it's gonna cost you $4,500. So we don't do that. We include it as part of everything that we do because it took me two hours to do it. Um, now granted, this client is really super awesome. Like I said, we pick awesome clients. But um, they, they were like, we love this, this is great. This is more than we ever could have imagined and you did it all in scope and so we don't have any changes. Yay, we love no changes. That doesn't always happen. But um, we, still, we still include it as part of what we do. So the benefits of VR, um, really best use for this stuff is when you're doing multiple shots or you're using it as part of the design process and you want to make changes or you've got video projects. I mean, hands down, like no brainer, you hit your head if you're not using VR and you're doing video because it's just too easy. Um, but I, I think that if you're trying, like we had a client call us a couple weeks ago and he said, I just want one shot of the front of the house. And I said, call someone in India because they can do that for you for like $300 and you'll get exactly what you want and you don't need what we do, you know? So if you're just doing one still shot of the front of the building, keep it simple um, and, you know, call somebody who, that, that's what they do. They do a, a flat, I mean to me it's a flat rendering, right? It's a 3D, but it's, it's flat in that it's not immersive. Um, massive time reductions, um, unlimited still shots, so we don't charge our clients anymore for each still shot or each angle. You know, oh, if you want a bird's eye view versus a flat straight on view, it costs more. There's none of that stuff. We just take the roof off and take a picture of your 3D floor plan. It's not a big deal. Um, no frame by frame video, and then multiple deliverables that are available. So you've got your stills, you've got your video, but then you've also got 360 panoramas. You've got interactive walkthroughs like Mark was talking about with Twin Motion, right? So it's, it's similar. Twin Motion is actually built with Unreal Engine in the, in the infrastructure of it. So you have all these other types of deliverables. Um, we actually set up a little playground over there <laughs> if you want to go um, and check out a project that Philip's working on. If you turn around, you can kind of see the grass breathing. There's a keyboard, um, the keyboard and mouse. <laughs> but you can just go walk through the, yeah. little, the little space over there, and there's a building, and um, you can turn on the lights, and you can open the refrigerator or whatever. Um, but those kinds of things are, um, I think, getting to a place where they're not just cool, <clears throat> They've been that way for a really long time. Oh, that's really cool, but how does it really apply to my business, or is it really gonna improve my relationship with my clients? Or, and I think we're getting there, because we're getting beyond the gaming aspect of it, and we're moving into things that really make sense for our clients, at least. And I think Mark is um, showing that, too. You're implementing this stuff you know, in your own business. And, and I think, despite some that's of the good. challenges, Huh? Not as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, despite some of the challenges, it's, it's, you're just like, we have to do it, right? Because there's just too many benefits. Um, and so that's where we're at too. There were just too many benefits, and so we moved completely to VR. Um, so we do custom projects. We do do one-on-one -on -one VR coaching. So if we have clients that are architects or, or um, designers that want to learn VR, um, Philip offers one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we also just launched a DIY VR school for people who use ARCHICAD, and it talks to you about how to take ARCHICAD and move it into Unreal and teaches you how to do that. Um, and so we did, a, we did a $75 ARCHICAD discount for tonight called MarchiCAD. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. I just made that up right before we got here. Um, but anyway, it's, it's on there. It's at um, spatialist.teachable.com, and you can type in MarchiCAD, and you get $75 off um, for this month. 
And um, I think that might be it. It's not showing the ads anymore. Oh, here we go. This is our little ArchiCAD to Unreal Engine Reel. So you can see our ArchiCAD model. And then this is our Unreal Engine transformation. And this is really fun because sometimes when Philip is bored, he'll put a little first person shooter gun on there. And then we can, <laughs> we can shoot like the walls. And, and, and the one I really like is the one that shoots bouncy balls because then we can just watch them bounce all over the place. <laughs> they make a fun noise. But really, I mean, your clients can look through this. They can get a sense of um, not just material, but also even scale. You know, when you have this, especially in the goggles, and I'm sure, Mark, you know that, people are just like, wow, like, I'm here. Um, the other thing that I think is really cool about this is the social aspect of it. So everyone wants to have something really cool, and if they see something like this, they want to share it with everybody that is their friends or in their, at their work or whatever, and they want to say, look at what my architect is doing for me. And um, this kind of stuff is like puppy videos, like on Facebook. Like, people love this stuff. So, so um, you know, stop sharing puppies and share your, <laughs> share your VR. Um, it's just super fun, and, um, and we think that it's really relevant. Um, and we think that it's the future so, of architecture. So we, we want, or how to present it. So we want to, um, you know, not just do it for people, but we want to invite people to be part of the VR community because we feel like the more people jump on <laughs> the train, the better we'll all get, right? And, um, and that's awesome because we want to just keep getting better. So I talked the whole time. I didn't yeah. let you talk. If you have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have any tech questions. <laughs> And if you want to play in our little playground, yeah, you, you can, can take a you look. Yeah, you can just go and uh, touch the mouse and just yeah. walk around. And we brought some spatialist you know. breath mints. And some of the advantages we uh, had a little too many, too much beer. We had oh, sure. Uh, I saw Twin Motion. I mean, sorry, on uh, Zidlinian. No, Twin Motion. Mm -hmm. I saw Twin, twin Motion the first time, and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah. And I was like, I need to buy this now. Uh, but the challenge is um, the the difference between Twin Motion and Unreal Engine is the They've simplified uh, coding where you can actually set up a chair like this and uh, walk into the space and flip the chair, change it to a different uh, furniture, change it to a different color. You can do all that stuff in there. And to me, that was, that was something that was more attractive in the gaming platform as opposed to Twin Motion. Twin Motion, I love the speed, the way it works, uh, but it is, it is what's hot right now for architects and... Uh, well, and it has the connection with ArchiCAD. It has a connection with ArchiCAD. Not so many, not so many companies are building their systems to accommodate ArchiCAD. So we're limited with Atlantis and uh, Twinmotion. And I was like, I had Atlantis the first time and I used it for a couple of years and I struggled with it. And I was, every time there was a new release, I was praying that they figure out the grass and you know, <laughs> the grass and you know, instead of getting Photoshop and some grass and species and plants. Yeah. So that was tough. But uh, when it got to uh, Unreal Engine, it was so good. It was so uh, easy to use, and I can get any question from any client right now, and they could say, "Hey, could you uh, add some type of fireplace? Could you make sure that there's some fire happening out there?" And you know, some of these high high-end clients they need to see some of these things. So the market, uh, so they can present some really uh, s astonishing uh, images um, that their clients could see or potential clients could see and get kind of driven and yeah. feel like they want to get it. Uh, so um, it was no kind of, it wasn't difficult for me to transition to that. The only problem is the learning curve is, is so big because uh, you have to do a little bit of coding if you want to learn, if you want to, like right there we have, uh, you can walk in the space, the doors automatically open. Um, the lights are just, you can turn off the lights and turn them on. You can, uh, you know, walk outside the, the house, you can fly in the house. All those things is coding done. But that's where we come in and we do all those crazy stuff. So we can submit the file and then you can just have fun with it. So I, we wanted to be in a position where we have, we cannot say no to any proposal. So you can say, I want this building to do this and we'll do it. You know, so that's, that's one of the most, uh, the the dirty, dirty satisfaction. The, the, yeah. So um, yeah. So if you have any questions, just uh, ask me. Uh, we have a, 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 a ArchiCAD uh, uh, to Unreal Engine process platform 
uh, training where you can go and just kind of learn.